Hey everybody, welcome back. Devin, the OG, the original Grognard here for Lock and Load Publishing. And today we are taking a look at Bougainville, the Forgotten Campaign, Lock and Load Publishing's newest Battles on Demand game, done in conjunction with War Diary Magazine, associate producers in game development by Rory Matheson and John Heim, game design by Michael Taylor. This was mostly uh, a, the game done by the gentleman over at War Diary Magazine, and we are publishing uh, it for them. Uh, we've got a really, really cool uh, relationship with with Roy and the and the folks over at War Diary Magazine. Uh, we, of course, tend to think that War Diary Magazine is probably one of the best wargaming magazines out there. And as such, we we have we've worked, we have entered into a very nice relationship with them. Uh, if you go over to War Diary Magazine and sign up for a year subscription, which is going to be three issues, it's going to be thirty six dollars. So you're paying thirteen dollars an issue. If you subscribe for a year's worth of the magazine, you will get any one of Lock and Load's, your choice, Battles on Demand games. And we've got, uh, I think we're up to like 15 that we've got so far. And normally those games run anywhere from $20 to $30. Plus, you also get kind of some hefty uh, coupon codes uh, for use with uh, three different game companies, Lock and Load Publishing, and for the life of me, I can't remember what the other two game companies are. So really, I... It, Signing up for the subscription for the magazine pays for itself in the in the discount codes and and basically the free game you get and it's a really really good magazine. Uh, you can buy the magazine separately, but hey, like I said, go out get a subscription thirty six bucks. I mean, here in Seattle, that's like what two cups of coffee. So you know, yeah, we in Seattle we kind of like our coffee. So anyways, we're taking a look at Bougainville today. Uh, forgotten campaign, so forgotten that. I, as much as I love World War II, even I am very mm, lack of knowledge of this particular campaign. But it is, here we go. Here we go. What do we got? Bougainville, Forgotten Campaign, the manual. How many pages? Have we even got page numbers on here? We don't have page numbers on here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so 25 pages plus what? One, two, three, four... Six pages of scenarios. There are two different scenarios. One that covers the entire full campaign from start to finish. And then a second scenario that just focuses on the Australian actions at Bougainville. Really big font like we like to do here at Lock and Load Publishing. We'll give you the graphics examples for the counters so you know exactly what all the counters are. So it, at the end of the day, it, it is a, a lighter uh, zone of control odds ratio system and we've seen them all before SPI Avalon Hill they've been done forever but that doesn't mean that's a bad thing I actually like getting back to some of these simpler type in concept games of you know your simple zone of control odds ratios you know hunting for the hunting for the points to get the right odds column rolling the dice what really makes a lot of the games like that stand out is what chrome is in it. And I think this has got some really cool chrome in it. Let's go ahead and take a look. Because basically it comes down to the U.S. starting off doing their amphibious assault to, to establish a beachhead. And the U.S. are prevented from moving too far away from that beachhead for pretty much the entire game. And most of the island clearing goes, it falls to the Australians who show up in a few, more, a few, few turns after the start of the game. Uh, you do have, what have we got? We've got, you know, we've got trails and roads. The Japanese have a barge movement that they can do once per game. Of course, you got rivers. Uh, what are some of the really cool chrome? It's got, okay, so this is one thing we don't see a lot in games like this. Fatigue and exhausted, which affects the dice roll modifiers. Uh, support, artillery, that's kind of standard. Air support. Some of the things that you can do is uh, is how the supply works. The Japanese supply is, is really dependent on how many rice paddy hexes they maintain control of. And so one of the allies' uh, jobs is to try to go out and capture these with these rice paddy hexes to reduce the amount of supply that the Japanese have. One of the things that Japanese can do with supplies is that they can, where there is a trail, I can't see if I can find it. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? There is a trailhead that they can actually spin supply and convert it into a road. 
it's in here somewhere. Oh, well, I can't find it. But it, it's a really cool it's a really cool mechanic. So it, you can actually spend supply to make the Japanese traveling across the island easier because you're using the supply to widen the trails and the roads, which of course it's easier to move troops along roads than it is along um along trails uh and then of course like i said we've got the exhaustion uh, there's a little there is some hidden mechanics the japanese do have some dummy units so i mean mostly let's take a look at this right here complexity really low two out of ten solitaire playability five mainly because of the 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 the, the dummy hexes but honestly i think I, anybody who plays hex encounter games and more often than not play against themselves is like, ah, just turn all the counters over and, you know, I don't know which one's the dummy counters until I actually run into them. So that, that it's, it's an easy mechanic to get around if you want to do solo play. So that's the rule book. Uh, got a couple uh, player charts, one for the allied player, one for the Japanese player. And again, like I said, it's your standard odds ratio. ARL, ARAS, MC, MC, DR, DRL, DL. What does that mean? A, all attacking units are eliminated. Attacking units lose one step and retreat. Attacker retreat one hexers. Attacker stop. Now this is kind of cool. Morale check. Units have morale. And if, if you get the morale check, you have to roll defender first, then attacker if necessary. Basically, if it comes down to a morale check, the defender has to check morale and if it fails, then it's then the results are DR, AS, or AR. But if they pass, then the attacker has to roll a morale check, and then there they could have a result of uh, AS or AR being the attacker. So you when you get kind of that mid row, because you look at one to one columns, you know. Like most odds ratio tables, one to two is going to affect the attacker. Three or four is going to kind of affect both five. Six, and then that's kind of standard in all odds ratio type charts. But so when you get the, you know, the three or four, the morale check, uh, the defender, if they make the morale and the allies don't, well, that's bad for the allies. So I think that's a, kind of a really cool mechanic that we don't really see often enough. Um, so we're going to see how that plays out in the game. And then DR, defender retreats, DRL, defender takes step loss, so on and so forth. Yeah, really, really kind of. Uh, standard, what we've seen. And then, of course, you got amphibious flanking attacks, Japanese supply tables, and your terrain effects chart. And the charts are both the same for both sides. And nothing on the back. So both sides have got the same exact chart. It's just one's green and one's brown, depending on what side you're looking at. Counters, very low counter count. I mean, what, maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. A hundred counters. I mean, you don't see a lot of games like that. And, you know, you got your fatigue counters. And then there's step loss counters. And then there's the, there's the bar, bar, barge, not barrage, barge movement. Close air support. Green Island, which is one of the Japanese supply uh, locations that the Allies can try to capture to reduce their supply points. Japanese victory points. Yeah, there it is. Buin Road built. So you put this counter out there uh, between Buin, the city of Buin, and someplace else, and you basically follow the trail. Um, and wherever you you build the trail to, that's that's kind of like the railhead, and you just keep pushing that forward as you build it. Uh, 93rd Division support, turn markers, flanking, Allied control. There's fortifications. There's tank support there's artillery support of course you got the u.s marines uh you got the anzac forces and then you've got japanese fortress uh, fortifications a couple dummy markers some japanese sniffles special naval La special naval landing infantry usually called sniffles and imperial army so yeah you got the kind of the good mix and one of one of the things about the game now oh, let's take a look at the map before we get into and of course as with most lock and load publishing titles, the counters just fall right out and they're pre-rounded. So very, very small footprint. This is, oh, I don't know, this isn't even 11 by 17. It's more an eight and a half by 17. Really, really large hexes. I mean, my thumb is huge. So these are at least good inch, inch and a half hexes. So you got a lot of, a lot of open space. And let's take a look at one of the counters. They pop right out. They sit in there nice and neat. Go ahead and zoom in a little bit. There's a lot of uh, uh, space around the hexes, so you're not going to have stacks of hexes running into each other. Uh, so I really, really like that. Um, I mean, as an old ASL player, old squad leader player, 
it, we'd have these tiny hexes with these tiny counters in them. And I, I just can't do that anymore. I don't think many of us more mature, I'm just going to say that, more mature players can deal with that. But the entire Bougainville area, and you've got the different terrain types. Now, one of the, and of course, you know, you turn record track, the Green Island, which the Americans can invade, flanking attack, 93rd Division if they're fatigued, air support, and then kind of... Uh, uh, this is the actual turn. What? Is, oh no, that's supply. Okay, so supply over there. Turn record track here. Each turn is about two months long. Each hex is about seven miles. Um, and as you can see, the campaign lasted from 43 to 45. So not very fast moving campaign or very dynamic campaign. Um, like I said, each hex is seven miles. So we're looking at, I don't know, 100 miles from coast to coast, tip to tip, and maybe, you know, let's say one, two, three, four, 35 miles wide at the, at its widest point. So very slow, very difficult ground that was fought over. Uh, for the most part, uh, most hexes can only have one step in it anyways. There are some Japanese, the, uh, the not the Japanese, the, uh, the jungle plains hexes, these hexes right here, that you can stick more than one unit in. But for the vast amount of the interior, these deep jungle and these mountain hexes and these rough hexes, you're only going to get one, one unit in it anyways. So, and if you look at some of the counters, I mean, the Japanese are beefy with, they've got some four fours. The first number is the attack value. The second number is their morale. Of course, the Marines, six, three, four, three, you know, all that. And then, uh, Armor actually is a support unit, so that can actually be stacked in with anything else. So you're going to see a lot of low-value attacks, a lot of attacks, unless either side works really hard one way or another. You're going to be looking at 1-to-1, one 2-to-1 one, one odds, maybe 3-to-1. But it's going to be a very low, in my opinion, because this is all theory craft, I haven't played it yet, uh, kind of a low... Uh, I don't want to say... Well, it is kind of a low-intensity conflict. Um, so... Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be real fun. We're going to be getting to this table right after we get this video done, probably. Uh, go through it a few times on my own to make sure I got all the rules in, uh, straight in my head before I start playing it. Uh, but yeah, we are definitely going to be playing this. A again, uh, this is part of the War Diary Magazine uh, Battles on Demand series. Uh, if you're interested in uh, subscribing to War Diaries Magazine, like I said, it's a great deal because you get a free game and a bunch of discount coupon codes, which pretty much equals the value of the magazine. Plus, you're still getting the magazine as well. I'll put the link for that down in the uh, comment section below. I also put a link to the Battles on Demand games in the comment section below. I think that's all we got. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section below. I'll talk to everybody later. See ya!